and allows Sam Congato to get up some running room, and they pick up a first down. They call that their U formation. 13 carries, 117 yards. Favre tries to get the big strike here. It's incomplete again. Excellent coverage by the Detroit Lions' R.W. McQuarters. Let's go to Stuart Scott, a Sports Center 30 and 30 update. Thanks a lot, guys. Colts trying to be just the fourth team ever to start a season 13 0, taking on the Jags. They called his pattern a stutter go. Marvin Harrison stuttered and he went to the hizzy. 65 yards, one of two touchdowns on the day. Colts beat up the Jazz. Baseball news the Boston Red Sox have expressed interest in bringing Roger back if the Rocket wants it. Boston Globe reports Rocket is interested. Let's go back to the fellas down Green Bay. Sam Congato up to the 25-yard line. You know, you, I'm sitting there watching. Tell me this guy's not a legitimate pro football player. If you watch the way this guy moves, his feet, keeping his legs going, whatever he's studied, he's learned a lot. He broke to the outside, then back onto the inside. If you just take a look at his legs, he sees the whole field. When he saw this opening, he just took off. R.W. McQuarters could not catch him. I just like what he does. Well, he tried the Lambo leap, and his leaper got caught. <laughs> and, Paul, that was the longest run by a Packer rookie in 57 years. This is the tight end, David Martin. Favre starting inside his five, trying to engineer a drive that could get him a tie or the lead. You know, you played in cold weather, and you're watching Favre throw the ball, and you know the heat that he can throw the ball with. Can you believe the catches that these guys are making? That's the thing that I've been impressed with from the Green Bay Packers. We know Brett throws the ball hard, and you know his arm still has a lot of strength in it. But these guys have, haven't used their bodies at all. They're all hands catchers, and they've done an excellent job. They haven't been bobbled one bit. Gatto, nothing this time taken down at the 30-yard line. With all the skill players gone, Favre leads the NFL in interceptions but it hasn't changed who he is on the field. And maybe I just don't have the smarts to talk myself into or out of certain decisions or plays. Um, I don't know. But I do know this, I'll play the game a certain way, and I will be as critical about my play as I've always been. But, you know, if you're a guy who swings for the fence, you swing for the fence, you know? They're not going to ask you to lay a bunt down. <laughs> well, he hasn't laid a bunt down in 15 years and doesn't intend to. Joe, you made a great point at the beginning of the oh, telecast. You said he's not going to change, and we don't want to see him change. And you're right. I, the, and we, we talked about it at practice on Friday a little bit, just talking about the game and the position. I don't want to see him change his mentality to be aggressive. What, what I mentioned to him was when you get down into the scoring areas, that's where you have to try and protect points because you don't have the players around you to make up for errors like you had in the past. Third and seven, three wide up. Underneath, driver looked over, found where the chains were and tried to get there. He only made the 40, had to reach the 41. Earl Holmes did a nice job of making the tackle short of the sticks. You know what's amazing, Michael? Sam Congato is averaging 8.3 yards per carry. Favre is averaging six yards a throw. And that's a terrific job by Earl Holmes. Really not allowing Donald Driver to pick up the first down. Very high, very short kick. And that big average for Gatto Paul comes from a team that's averaging only 3.2 yards a carry all year long. Third worst in the league. Wednesday night, Big Daddy versus the new kid on the block. Top draft pick Andrew Bogut faces his biggest opponent, Shaquille O'Neal, in the Miami Heat. Heat, Bucks, live Wednesday night, the NBA on ESPN. Monday night, the electrifying Michael Vick and the Falcons host the Saints on Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern on ABC Sports. You know that game's in a dome? In, inside where it's warm? <laughs> Oh, come on. It's not that Jeez, bad out here. Come on. Nice out here. <laughs> Football weather. Jones can't turn the corner. 
gang tackled by the Packers. Nick Barnett led the charge. He has used that speed. This is a defense where the middle linebacker is featured. You know, if, if I'm going to run against the Green Bay Packers, I'm going to run the KGB side. Why? Why? Because he goes down inside more than Campman does. Campman is the right left defensive end, and he pretty much stays at home. KGB. Well, it's part of the design of the defense, too, Paulie. Jones is spun down by Campman. When you think of the design of Jim Bates' defense, the linebackers design to make plays. If you can't picture Zach Thomas with the Miami Dolphins averaging over 180 tackles in the last four years, then you look at Nick Barnett, who's got over 150 in just 12 ball games. That's the design is for the middle linebacker. The ends are supposed to chase the ball, and the tackles are supposed to be the contained guys. And this has been a change for KGB. He feels like he's playing much better against the run. It's just that they haven't been ahead enough to get his his uh, sacks up. Third down and long. The crowd back into it. Four-man rush. Garcia underneath. Nothing doing. Bryson makes the catch wrapped up immediately by Mark Roman, the strong safety. I've got a problem with this offense, to be honest with. This offense does not give its football players a chance to make plays. You have to be too perfect. You have to break tackles. It's a five-step drop. You need third and eight. You throw a four-yard route. The routes, no more. They aren't even over eight yards. I mean, I just don't like what they're doing on offense. They're not giving a chance to anybody. In a field position game for sure. Chapman will make a fair catch. At the 20, 2.49 to go, third quarter. Still a three point ball game in Green Bay. The PGA Tour presents the Franklin Templeton Shootout. Tiburon Golf Club in Naples, Florida hosted the event for the fifth consecutive year. Heading into the final round of the partner tournament, Kenny Perry and John Houston found themselves trailing the leaders by two strokes. They opened the event with a 64 in the modified alternate shot format and a 63 in the best ball round. But on Sunday, they scrambled their way to a 13 under 59 and a two-stroke victory. Kenny Perry and John Houston have won the 2005 Franklin Templeton shootout. It was the first win for both Perry and Houston at Greg Norman's yearly tournament. Congratulations, Kenny Perry and John Houston, the 2005 Franklin Templeton shootout champions. Atlanta has selected Brett Favor, quarterback, Southern Mississippi. It was Don Weiss announcing the selection of Brett Favre, and it was he was so unknown at that point, at least to a lot of people, that they pronounced the name as it is spelled instead of as it's pronounced. See, that's the problem I had. From <laughs> no, Thiesman no. to Thiesman, the, the Favre trophy, the Favor trophy. <laughs> I mean, it, it works. See, it happens to other people. Yours was calculated. Well, that too by the Notre Dame PR staff. <laughs> Thank you. Because Thiesman doesn't rhyme with Heisman. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you, he, when he, you say his favorite tar target is Donald Driver, and when these two guys decide to hook up, this was just a perfect route, and this is done by the offensive line. Take a look at this, and look at this route. Here's Driver back. It was perfect. He just leans into this. That's the way he can throw <laughs> you know, Everybody talks about have a classic finish, stay on balance. He doesn't have any of that. And when you have an arm that's sort of independent from your body, you can make a lot of throws that a lot of people can't. He laughs at his own footwork because he's got that great arm. He really doesn't need it. Gatto, who has had a huge night, wrapped up the 39, may have lost a yard on that one. See, I believe now what the Packers are going to have to do is start complimenting what Sam Gatto is doing by running left and running right and coming back with some bootlegs. They're going to have to slow down the pursuit 
of this Detroit defense, which, by the way, I think has played very, very well. Sean Rogers, a bona fide pro bowler. Dan Wilkinson, in his 12th year, has really come on and played well. Two exceptional tackles for them. Far with a lot of time underneath that. Henderson, nice move to get away, and Henderson has a first down and more. You know what? There's a lot of flags on the field, but I'll tell you how many years we've been watching William Henderson just keep doing this over and over and over again. Favre knows that if everybody is covered, number 33, William Henderson, is open. Or if even if he's not, all you got to do is make sure you get the ball in his hands. Personal foul, major face mask, defense number 58, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. That's on Wally Rayner. What a move William Henderson makes. After he makes the catch, he squares around and just gives the little hurdle to get over. And there's the face mask by Rayner. Just hangs on. And the reason why it's a 15-yarder is because he yanks and turns the helmet. Good Jeez, job. You could have penalized him 45 for that when he had it forever. So a break for the Packers again at the 31-yard line. Gatto. Blockers in front. Sam Khan Gatto to the 15-yard line. And Vontae Leach, the big fullback, was out there as his escort. You know that Vontae Leach really didn't have to block anybody. That hole was so wide open. When Vontae Leach goes out in front, watch 48. When he goes out in front, look at He doesn't hit anybody until he gets 20 yards downfield. Here comes Sam Khan Gatto to the outside. But Leach is there. If he turns to the inside and makes that block, he might have gone for a touchdown. What do you have to do to prove to a coach that you can play in this league? I, I think that's about it. 18 carries, 144 yards tonight. Does he have 300 yards rushing yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gatto tries to get outside. This time he is dragged down. In fact, Sam Con Gatto with two rushes for 100 yards uh, this year. Two carry or two games for 100 yards tonight. He's been terrific. Then we take a look at the rush chart. He's run a lot to the right. Eight carries, 108 yards. Of course, he had the big one off the right side. Not many have been run to the left. They line up with the U formation, put Kevin Berry in at the tight end on the right side, and keep wearing out Corey Redding over on the left side of that Detroit defense. That's the end of the third quarter. The Packers down by three, but they're driving. ESPN Sport Legends presents Pete Sampras. Pete Sampras retired from tennis in 2003 with a record 14 Grand Slam titles. Consistently ranked number one in the 90s, he's spoken of in the same breath as the all-time greats. However, his unemotional style made it difficult for many to see his greatness while he was playing. With me, there really isn't anything uh, you know, controversial or, or, you know, that's why I got the claim of, of the boring thing was because I didn't, you know, throw my racket or act like a jerk out there. He's extremely true to himself. He's never tried to be something he's not. The only thing he's ever tried to be is the greatest tennis player who ever lived. He's a man of whole cloth. I applaud it. You can't instill or inject my personality into Pete Sampras. A true fan would look at that and say, man, this, this is a bluff. As he's accepted himself, other people are going to have to accept him for who he is. <laughs> to start the fourth quarter in Green Bay the Packers trailing the Detroit Lions 13 10 and by the way which is a very good football game and Brett Favre started out just a little bit shaky on his first play of the night not the cleanest uh, delivery you might say but then starts to catch it on the thing about Brett Favre is he just sets and does an excellent job of moving around in the pocket not as typical as say a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning but once he sets and has to fire, he gets it out 
as great as anybody that's ever played the game. Barth the quick out knocked down because R.W. McWhorter's closed on Ferguson. See, I, Ferguson has tried so hard to get on top of R.W. McWhorter's all night, and he hasn't been able to do it. They've run some goes on him. R.W.'s been right there. Now they run the hitch, thinking that R.W. would back up a little bit. He doesn't do it. He stays right with him. He's just lucky he didn't break on it and go the other way like happened to him last week against Chicago. Third down, and Antonio Chapman. Number 83 is in as a wide receiver for Green Bay. He was in motion. Favre under pressure. Can't get away. Taken down. Back at the 20-yard line. The sack to James Hall. The defensive end out of Michigan who has had a big game tonight. Dick Jerron told us last night the key to containing Brett Favre is pressure with the tackles. He's got to be delighted from what he got out of his two guys up front. Sean Rogers, Corey Redding, Dan Wilkinson, James Hall. Just the pressure by the four got to Favre. And now Longwell on to try a field goal. He's had one block tonight from 39. This is also from 39, and he's hit from 36. The Green Bay Packers have tied this ball game at all. Etiquette for the walk away. Good hand, guys. I would say shake the player's hand and wish him good luck. And someday, I'm going to do that. No! I don't know what proper etiquette is necessarily. <laughs> I conduct myself in the best manner that I can. I, I just try to get up and walk away. If you play with class, you ought to leave with class. I like the Phil Helmet exit. If there weren't luck involved, I guess I'd win every one. What am I supposed to do? Nice hand. Nice. Good luck, everybody. I'll see you later. That's what I always do. Yeah, I'm real happy. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. Good luck the rest of the way. Yes. Awesome. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, God loves you, man. Let them go about their business because you're a spectator now. No! No! Why do I get deserve this? <laughs> Was one at Mike. Oh, it was. And how many spectacular games have we seen involving that guy? He has been uh, a highlight reel his entire career. Allstock goes in with 145, takes Brett a total of 44 seconds to get him back on top. McCorders, who's had a tremendous night, now trying to get a return here and takes it up to the 33 yard line. 14 16 left to go in a tie ball game. It's 13 all. Welcome to the ESPN SoccerNet Press Pass Studio. We're focusing tonight on the World Cup draw. And let's talk about the United States. Quarter finalists in 2002. Tommy Smith and Janusz Mahalik are with me. But a tough draw, Janusz, for the Americans. Oh, absolutely. I think Tommy was spot on when he says it was a near-death group. I mean, it's going to be very, very difficult. Italy, of course, always involved in these World Cups and always one of the favorites. And Czech Republic, second in the rankings right now, if you believe them. Very, very talented team. Tommy. First game is crucial against this one. How did it stop Ned Ved Collar? And how do you get the ball past one of the best goalkeepers in the world, appropriately named Petr Cech? That's a big job for the U.S. Well, for the United States, shades of the 1990 World Cup finals. They were drawn then with Italy and the old Czechoslovakia. Here's Bruce Arena, the U.S. coach. We went to Italy in 1990 and, and saw the U.S. play against Czechoslovakia in Italy. And it'll be interesting to see 16 years later uh, what kind of progress we've made. And uh, I'm hopeful that... Uh, we have a, a good run over the next six months and get our team ready to play. ESPN Sunday Night Football brought to you by Miller. There's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. With Visa's multiple layers of security, you're protected. Staples, that was easy. And Mazda, always the soul of a sports car. Up here at least, Santa is a Packer fan. 
Isn't that pretty? Well, it's like the North Pole, isn't it here? Isn't this like, <laughs> like the neighborhood of the North Pole? I think the North Pole's warmer. <laughs> Garcia wants a screen. Bryson. KGB right there to stop it or make that Montgomery. Michael Montgomery, the rookie in at right defensive end, was right in the middle of that screen. You know, Joe mentioned something back in the in the first quarter about the Detroit Lions. And you said that, you know, they've got to go down, they've got to stretch the field a little bit. When you try to run screens against a team that you have 11 guys sitting within eight yards of the line of scrimmage, it's impossible to do that. You've got to get them off the line. Second and 11. Garcia flushed out of the pocket. Room to run. He's got a first down and got out of bounds. Wow, was there a collision? You could see that collision coming on the sidelines. That was Sean Bryson, number Sean. 24, I believe. That's what that came back and helped out. That's what you have to do. You have to come back and protect your quarterback. You could see Jeff Garcia directing traffic. And as he was being chased, here he is being chased by KGB. Bryson from the right part of your screen Whoa. just comes flying in oh. and takes KGB out. <laughs> those are one of those babies you dream about. Kabir got his initials scrambled that time. <laughs> <laughs> Pinner can't get outside this time grabbed around the ankles by Grady Jackson every game I've watched two ball games I should say and I've, I've seen a lot more of them every game Grady Jackson comes up with some kind of a play there's the big move right in the middle on Dominic Rayola he just throws him out of the way and a big guy slides inside that was unbelievable Grady Jackson I mean he just threw him out of the way. Like he was nothing. Rayola, I mean, he weighs 300 pounds. He only hit him with one hand. It's just remarkable to watch guys his side, his size, be that athletic. Garcia. Underthrown, but caught by Williams. Well, Joseph, you finally got your wish. <laughs> Here it comes. I'm going to tell you what, this ball is underthrown, but I, you know, I, I think, I really believe after all these years, this is by design. Now, watch this. His ball is underthrown. Roy Williams comes back. He's got the height advantage. And Al Harris really doesn't have much of a chance here. He's, he's motoring downfield. He can't turn and make the move that Roy Williams does, and it's the perfect throw. Boy, and Al Harris hasn't been beaten much by anybody. He really wasn't beaten on that one. It was underthrown. The receiver able to get back, and he couldn't. Garcia underneath to Pinner, and Pinner didn't have a chance. Nick Barnett with all that speed from the middle linebacker spot to make a tackle. Boy, has Nick Barnett in his third year really stepped up his game. And Jeff Garcia, we talked about having to challenge the Packers down the field a bit more. You see, he's only thrown four balls over 15 yards. Of course, that was the big one with the 40-yard reception. They've got to do that with more consistency. They have got to back him up. And, Paulie, you made a great point. You can't run screens unless you can get linebackers and defensive backs respecting deep plays. Get a little bit of space between them and the line of scrimmage. Empty backfield for Garcia. And every time they see that, they blitz. This time, the pass complete underneath. Mike Williams, the rookie. They have to reach just inside the seven-yard line for a first down. Mark Roman, the strong safety, made that tackle a couple of yards shy. This goes back a little bit to what Dick Duran talked to us about last night when we visited with him, that this football team needs to learn how to finish games. This would be a great confidence builder for him and his ball club if they can put this one in the end zone and then hold off the Packers as they try and tie it up or go ahead. The Packers, the Packers have lost Brady Pafinga, the rookie linebacker who was starting tonight. He has a left knee injury. Unlikely that he'll come back in the ballgame. Pollard has the first down inside the five. The veteran tight end with a good grab. Does Marcus Pollard just show you his experience? Now, he catches that ball on the outside, and the first turn he makes, he knows exactly where he is. He knows he doesn't have the first down. 
He's got to get inside the six yard line and he just makes it back to the inside. That's the easiest place for him to go where he has the most power. First and goal. Big acquisition from Indianapolis, a team that's just filthy rich with offensive players. They can afford to give up a quality guy like Pollard. Penner to the one. Our toes Pinner out of Kentucky. One of three running backs the Lions have used tonight. Our toes Pinner is, you talk about a guy running with, with power. Now watch him drop his shoulder right here and lean. He's going to lean towards the goal line. <laughs> Al Harris is in there, and the other three guys, yeah. he doesn't make it. It took four guys to bring him down. He's another one of those young guys in his third year that just is all over this ball club. He's not in. Pinner got maybe a foot, and that's it. Now, you're not going to run, I don't think, up the middle of this defense with Cullen Jenkins and Grady Jackson in there. And then, you know, they'll decide to throw in a Corey Williams who's only about 315 pounds on top of him. <laughs> you know, Arto Spinner, that's the second time we've seen him hit a brick wall tonight. And, you know, you get tired of that. Go outside a little bit. Now, this is where the athletic ability of a Jeff Garcia can really help you. I think it's a good opportunity for play action. Let Jeff go out, get on the perimeter, challenge the defense and make a play. Pinner is the tailback. Scotty finds to the wide side of the field. Pinner will get it. Second effort. They still going to mark him short. You know what they did? Joe, they went at right, right smack at Brady Jackson again, number 75, and he never moved. You can't Pinner, move him. Watch this. You want to see? Watch Pinner stop. Boom. That's it. See, That's as far as you're going, son. The other thing you saw on that shot was you did not see the Detroit Lions move any of the Green Bay Packers green shirts off the line. I love this. They're going to go for it. I love this. Why not? Watch the lines. See if the Detroit Lions, the white shirts, can move the green ones back. That's going to be the key. Fourth and goal. The play clock is running out. They spent an inordinate amount of time in the huddle after deciding to go for it. When a boxer prepares, he's only thinking of success. He's only thinking of destruction. But to conquer, he must obliterate the hopes of his opponent and be the only man standing. Fight Night, only on ESPN. And now another great moment on ESPN. The UEFA Champions League final, the top prize of European club football, has produced some of the most memorable games in history. In 2004, an unlikely pair of teams squared off. High-scoring Monaco and the Giant Killers Porter took the pitch for 90 minutes of unforgettable football. And in the end, it was Porter, the pride of Portugal, holding the European Cup high for the world to see. A celebration of sports memories from around the globe. Great moments on ESPN. I'm in. and a foot and the Lions talking over what they want to do. Yeah, when the offensive coordinator is talking to your wide receiver, Roy Williams, he's a guy they'll probably try and throw a jump ball to. Quarterback sneak by Garcia. No chance. What a horrible call. You're right. What a horrible call. You got a 185-pound, 195-pound guy who can't get any traction 
And what you do is you try and squeeze him up the field. You have a better chance throwing the ball to a 6'4 receiver than trying to ask a little quarterback to go against Grady Jackson. The finest figure skaters from around the globe compete in the ISU Grand Prix. From the city of St. Petersburg, the Cup of Russia. Tuesday on ESPN. the world will grow by one and a half billion people. Feeding this appetite for energy will take innovation, collaboration, and conservation. We've begun creating this new era of energy. Will you join us? You know, you, when you run at Grady Jackson once and you don't get an inch, then you run at him again and he doesn't get an inch, you wonder why you're going to do it the third time because he didn't get an inch this time either. Especially with the guy that, you know, he outweighs by 160 pounds. At least. So the Packers have it inside their own one. And if this is against Green Bay, it'll be about a three-inch penalty. Offense number 79. Doesn't matter. Half the distance to the goal, still first down. You know what? Grady Jackson is on Dominic Rayola number number uh, Rayola number 51. Watch him move him back. He just moves him back. He actually makes the play on the quarterback. Barnett comes in and makes the tackle, but he took the center and jammed him into Garcia. That's and, incredible. And you'll see there that the green shirts beat the white shirts off the line of scrimmage and got under them. And if you can't beat that line off, they're not going anywhere. Safety. Oh, fumble! The ball was fumbled. If they rule it a fumble, they're going to be very fortunate because Gatto was trapped in the end zone. That's a matter, Mike. If there's a holding penalty by the offensive line in the end zone, it's a safety. If it's if it occurred in the end zone. But certainly he was tackled in the end zone, then fumbled the ball forward. The Packers recover. So let's see what Mike Carey's ruling is. And Paul, you're absolutely right. If the penalty is in the end zone, it's a safety. If the penalty on the offense, any part, anyone on the offense in the end zone. It's a holding penalty in the end zone. It'll be a safety. Boy, you come from so deep in the eye. Yeah, it's very dangerous, isn't it? Well, when you're that far, when you're that far away from the line of scrimmage coming out of the end zone, the ball that's close, that's almost one of those run the quarterback. Got intentional down. grounding in the end zone for safety. Intentional grounding. Holding by the offense is declined. There was They're holding by the yeah. They're going to say that Sam Congato threw the ball forward to try to avoid the safety. So it's it's an illegal forward pass, intentional grounding. Well, but the, it doesn't matter anyway because the holding was in the end zone also. That was declined because they got, uh, they had two holding penalties, well, one intentional grounding and a holding penalty in the end zone. So they should get four points, two and safeties. And this is a good call. Now, Gatto, smartly, I mean, this can't hurt him. I want to show you. Yeah, he's already in the end zone. He's already going to be called for the safety, so why not try to get rid of it? But look at how look at how deep he is. He's he's eight yards deep, seven to eight yards deep in the end zone, trying to run the football. I, I just think that that particular play. Uh, 
boy, a lot of bad things can happen to you, and obviously one of them did. And Tony Fisher, who was the lead blocker, came out of there and just totally whiffed on somebody. So Gatto never had a chance. And now Detroit gets the ball back. That was unbelievable. And so after that great goal line stand, then they give up the safety. That's got to be heartbreaking. Well, here's you know, the other thing. Detroit took and drove the ball against that defense, so they haven't really been on the bench resting very long. There's been two plays. One was a penalty. Actually, two were penalties. And all of a sudden now, Green Bay's defense has to go back on the field. Terrific job by Dick Duran's defense. You know what? Everything happens on Sunday night football. You know why? How many times have we ever seen two penalties in the end zone? Both of them would have been called for safety. Now, there's a very long discussion going on with Mike Carey and his crew. Mike Sherman wants to challenge the call. And I, if my memory serves me correctly regarding challenges, I don't believe that the call that's been made can be challenged. Well, he can't challenge the intentional grounding. Intentional grounding. No, he cannot. And that was the call that was made on the field. 